to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, the human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. From Indianapolis, Indiana, it's the National Drag Racing Championships. A crowd of more than 75,000 has packed its way into the Indianapolis Raceway Drag Strip, a strip that has become very famous and which today will be the scene of the National Championships. This strip is only a quarter of a mile long, but they'll be hitting speeds up to 180 miles an hour. This is Bill Fleming welcoming you to the Indianapolis Raceway Park Drag Strip. Wide World of Sports during the past two years has covered just about every kind of automobile race, from the 24-hour race of the Mon to the high-powered stocks at Daytona. But today you will see something that perhaps you've never seen before. This race will last less than 10 seconds. The cars will be up to 1,000 horsepower. We'll guarantee you plenty of thrills and action today on the Indianapolis Raceway Drag Strip. And now let's get underway. And this is the semifinal of the Class C Modified Sports Production Class. Number 578 there is Sam Cunningham of Texas. He's against uh, Joe Drigas of Hammond, Indiana. Both in 61 Corvettes. And it's Cunningham on the inside who is out in front. As they come to the finish line, it is Cunningham in a breeze. So we'll see him again in the finals coming up very shortly in this class. We'll remind you we're down to the semifinals and the finals in many of these classes, which means that these cars have survived the week of competition, which has involved more than 1,000 cars in some 70 classes. And here's a final coming up right now. This is in the Ace Stock Automatics. Farthest from the camera, Ron Mandel in a 63 Plymouth. Closest to the camera is Bill Abraham in a 62 Pontiac. This is a trophy run, which means it's the finals in this particular class. These cars capable of 110 to 112 miles an hour. Here they go. And the Pontiac out in front just a little bit here as Bill Abraham takes the lead at the start. And he's got too much of a lead for Mandela to catch up, and it is Bill Abraham in the 62 Pontiac with the last time here of 13.28 or 109.48 miles per hour. So we have another uh, final coming up too here. Next will be the A Stock final, and this should be a dandy. Moving to the starting line now, the 62 Pontiac, farthest from the camera, is driven by Don Gay of Dickinson, Texas. And nearest the camera, Roth Swain driving the 62 Chevy from Clinton, Ohio. Here they go. Pontiac getting a good start. Don Gay in the lead here as they move to the halfway po uh, point. Chevy moving up a little bit, but Gay is going to take it. And they flash. The E.T. it's 12.81 or 111.52. So Don Gay is the winner in the A stock final in his 62 Pontiac. Another final trophy run here coming up. This is Sam Cunningham, whom you saw a moment ago in his 61 Corvette number 578 against Dick Collins of Newcastle, Delaware. This is the C modified sports production finals. Now you see the Christmas tree here. The lights, four amber lights and a green one, and if anybody jumps, the red light goes on in that particular lane. Strictly head-to-head -head competition. They've been going at it all week. Here's 456, close to the camera, Dick Collins in the 56 Corvette with a 62 engine, and Sam Cunningham in the 61 Corvette, farthest from the camera. Here they go, it's a good start. Cunningham taking a slight lead. Now he lengthens that lead. And as they come to the finish line, it is Sam Cunningham in the 61 Corvette. The elapsed time, 12.21 seconds, 114.94 miles per hour, and he takes home the trophy. Boy, these fellas really churning it up here at Raceway Park in Indianapolis, Indiana. And coming up now, we have the semifinals in the A-Gas class, and these are a lot of fun. You'll see a 33 Willys in this one and a 51 Angley. Here they go. It's Sanders McKelly Henry, 295 in the Willys, farthest from the camera, and George Altizer of Arlington, Virginia in the 51 Angley, as closest to the camera, and he wins it. Altizer, that's the car incidentally powered by a 63 Chevy engine. So Altizer will move into the finals of the A-Gas. 
And now here's another semifinal in the A-Gas Supercharged Division. Stonewood's at Cook Entry. The National Record Holder in a 40 Willys Supercharged Old Engine. And here is George Montgomery of Dayton, Ohio, former National Record Holder, out of retirement now, trying to take the crown away from the Stonewood's Cook Entry, driven by Doug Cook of Los Angeles. Everybody's been waiting for this one. This is the World Series of Drag Racing. Everybody anticipating this all year long, looking for the finals. The National Championship, and here we go with the semifinals. It's Montgomery taking a slight lead, a good start by Montgomery. And he's going to take him. Montgomery slices across, and he defeats the former record holder, Doug Cook, in the Stonewoods Cook 40 Willis. And so Montgomery will move into the finals, and uh, we hope before he does get into the finals, we'll have a chance to talk with him because I think he's going to have a great story for us. Coming up now, the another semifinal in the A-Gas. It's the Carol Schmidt in 408, uh, farthest from the camera, in a 41 Willys, and it's Henry Putnam in a 48 Anglia, and it's the Anglia on the inside that's got the lead. And it's Henry Putnam of Louisville, Kentucky, who will move into the finals against George Altizer in that division. All right, right now, let's talk to George Montgomery a little bit earlier. In fact, a few seconds ago, he won the other semifinal in this A-Gas Supercharged Division. George, you've got a beautiful little Willys here. What year is it? 1933 Willys Coupe. And it's all fiberglass, I understand. Uh, the entire front end doors and rear fenders and floorboard and firewall are fiberglass. Okay, now, you know, it's a 1933 Willys. Now, move the hood up for him. <laughs> this is where you really get a surprise. That does not resemble anything like a 1933 Willys, does it, George? What is this? That is a 1963 327 Chevrolet engine supercharged. Uh, okay, put it down. We'll talk about this because I, uh, I, I think that anybody interested in racing would like to know, you know, what does it cost to get one of these things ready to go for a championship race like this? Well, this car has an excess of $10,000 invested in it. And what's the fastest you've ever done? Uh, last week, I turned 143 mile an hour. Boy, and that's in 1,320 feet. Do you get any sensation as a driver of great acceleration in there, any G-load buildup or anything? Well, you're pretty tense, especially during races uh, uh, like this was. Uh, the acceleration sensation is great. There's no question about it. They carry the front wheels pretty well. And uh, it's not just jerking up like some cars, but this one pretty well carries them quite a ways. Did you have any kind of a rivalry with uh, the one you were in there with Doug Cook in the uh, semifinal? Well, see, uh, I was champion for 59, 60, 61 when I retired. And when he took over, and of course, uh, word of mouth and uh, advertisements have pretty well cued me to come back in again. It was only three weeks ago that I bought this car out of retirement to come back here again. Well, no wonder you got such a great applause, and I know everybody out here from Ohio is rooting for you in these finals, and we'll be coming up with those in just a moment. Thanks very much, and good luck, George. Thank you, sir. Okay, we'll be having the finals in just a moment here at the National Drag Racing Championships on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Here's a good word on how to make the most of your money from the Foundation for Commercial Banks. Back at the Indianapolis Raceway Park, we're all set now for the finals in the A-Gas Supercharged Division. And George Montgomery is back in his car, the fellow we just talked to a moment ago, in uh, this 33 Willys coming up in the finals against Gordon Selkirk of Peoria, Illinois, who's in a 35 Willys, powered by a 61 old supercharged engine. And this is the one right here. We'll be going in the finals against George Montgomery from Dayton, Ohio. Former national record holder who would like to come out of retirement today and win in this A-Gas supercharged division. Starter putting him right on the line now. Neither car can be over before the Christmas tree is counted down. There you see the lights, and they're off. It's a good start. And Montgomery gets a great start on the inside. Look at him go. And it's Montgomery in a breeze as he flashes across the finish line, beating Gordon Selkirk of Fiori, Illinois. And you can tell by the crowd reaction, very happy they are indeed. The elapsed time, 10.54. 138.46 miles per hour for George Montgomery. Now 
Getting set now for the semifinals in the Super Stock Automatics. 63 Dodgers pretty well have this one under control. Al Ekstrand, farthest from the camera, in the lawman car, and then Jim Thornton, this is Ekstrand, from Gross Point Woods, Michigan, the 63 Dodge, and Jim Thornton from Royal Oak, Michigan. Here they go, both out of the same stable, so to speak. Here we go, as the Ram Charger on the inside takes the lead, and it's Jim Thornton out in front. No question there about who will go into the finals in the A-Stock Automatics. Jim Thornton of Royal Oak, Michigan. Coming up now, the trophy run, the finals in the D-Gas competition. Gene Moody from Bloomfield, Illinois, in that 55 Chevy, farthest from the camera and closest to the camera, Dave Hales of Arlington, Virginia, in a 37 Willie Chevy Power. So this is the finals in this D-Gas competition, and it's a good, even start. Looks like uh, Hales has a slight lead. Now the Chevy moves up. Gene Moody takes the lead, and he goes across by half a car lane. So Gene Moody of Bloomfield, Illinois, has an elapsed time of 12.58 seconds. Calculating quickly, it's 110.97 miles per hour for the winner, Gene Moody. Now we're getting set for the Superstock Automatic finals. You just saw uh, Jim Thornton a moment ago. They're back up to the start line. He's in against Herm Moser of Detroit. Both 63 dodges. This is the finals. And it's Thornton again taking the lead on the inside. 979. And he's got to take it. And he goes across in front with a lapse time of 12.23 seconds. 116.42 miles per hour in that 63 dodge. Finals in sea gas competition. Larry Teeter of Elgin, Illinois in a 32 Ford Chevy powered and Charlie Hill in a 40 Willys. 227 is Larry Teeter and 106 is Charlie Hill. Watch this uh, car incidentally do wheel stands during this week of competition. The tremendous horsepower that 62 uh, Chevy engine and the way he's got, look at it. The way he's got it balanced every time he shifts all the four speeds it handstands practically and there goes Charlie Hill across the finish line, and he wins in the finals of the Sea Gas competition. Very popular uh, fellow, former record holder, and his elapsed time 12.29. Now a trophy run in the G Gas competition. We have a 34 Willys that you're looking at right now, and a 51 Henry J. A lot of different classes here, some 70 in all, depending upon displacement, of course, of the engine and the way the chassis is built. 155, that's Bobby Vaughn of uh, Washington. And from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Jim Harris in the Henry J, closest to the camera. This is the finals in this G gas competition. The G, G there that you see on the windshield and also on the side window. Jim Harris getting a good lead at the start. A good fast start by Harris. But look at that uh, Bobby Vaughn in the 34 Willies. A good race here as Vaughn moves out in front, and he takes it, despite uh, falling back at the start. So, the winner of this one, Bobby Vaughn, in the 34 Willys, powered by a 57 GMC engine. 13.79 the elapsed time. And now the finals in the E-Gas competition. You might mention, boy, they really churn these races out. Uh, you can see more than a thousand cars a day. They're all set to go now as Glenn Stewart and Jerry Murphy will battle it out in E-Gas. Jerry Murphy on the inside in the 55 Chevy. Glenn Stewart in the 52 Chevy is falling way back, and it's Jerry Murphy from Auburn, Massachusetts going across. Elapsed time, 13.54, or 103.80 miles per hour, and he wins it in E-Gas competition. Well, we'll have more action from the National Drag Racing Championships here in Indianapolis, including the big double-A dragster competition, capable of 180 miles an hour, coming up very shortly. The Gillette Safety Razor Company is bringing you this segment of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Well, we're going to take a break right now in the National Drag Racing Championships at Indianapolis Raceway Park for action of a different kind. These are the finals in the D Dragster competition for the slingshot-type frame cars, older Ford engines and six-cylinder engines. 
Farthest from the camera is Pete Schattiger, last year's winner and defending champion in 96. And number 28 is Buddy Hammer of Oxnard, California. And here they go, a good start by both of them. And Schattiger now has taken the lead as they hit the halfway mark. And Schattiger wins it. Car number 96, powered by a 48 Ford flathead engine. 10.85, 125.69 is his top speed. Another trophy run coming up right now on the A competition class. Bill Bagwell of Collierville, Tennessee in 463. This is a 23 Ford T Roadster powered by a Buick engine. And number 37 is James Neely of Middletown, Ohio. Chevy powered 23 T Roadster. Here they go. These are capable of 140 plus miles an hour. Look at them jump. Real good start by Bagwell, but a great finish here by Neely. And he just noses out Bagwell at the end. Elapsed time, 9.82 and a top speed of 143.26 miles per hour. That's the combination street dragster type and slingshot type of racer, and they really move. Okay, here is uh, B competition now. And this is the final trophy race. Ronnie Bone, farthest from the camera, and Frank Turk of Indianapolis, closest to the camera in uh, number 59, 559 is Ronnie Bone. The fifth, uh, 39 Fiat is the uh, car number 59, powered by a Chevy engine. And here they go, and Frank Turk just leaves Bone at the starting line, and Frank Turk will win this one easily. This is the trophy run of the competition, and Frank Turk the winner. The last time, 10.39. Top speed, 134.12 miles per hour. Now the double A altered as they Come to the start line, semi-final. Number 202 is Eddie Edwards of Simsonia, Kentucky, a 32 Bantam Crosby he's driving. And uh, he's in there against Eugene Cam of Lucasville, Ohio. Look at Eddie Edwards go in that 32 Bantam, and he's really got it smoking with a Chevy engine in it. And he crosses the finish line ahead of Eugene Cam, so Eddie Edwards will go into the finals here of the double A all his class. Now the double-A competition coupe class. This is a slingshot dragster with a car body on it. Number 54, the bull weevil, is Harrison Jacobs as the driver. 57 Chrysler engine, and Wayne Morgan of Dayton, Ohio, is uh, his competition here. This is the trophy run, and look at Jacobs go. He's got the lead by a mile, and he's gonna take it easily. The calculator gives us 9.21 elapsed time, 162.45 miles per hour, and that is a new record. So we'll be back in just a moment to talk with Harrison Jacobs in the Bow Weevil. We'll have more action from the National Drag Racing Championships in just a moment on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Right now, you're looking at the Bull Weevil, which is the winner in the Class AA Competition Coupe Division. And uh, right here is the owner, Ray Godman, and uh, the driver, uh, Harrison Jacobs. Uh, fellas, I'm kind of interested in just exactly how many horsepower you've got. Ray, being the owner, you probably uh, qualified to answer that. Yes, Bill. It develops approximately 650 horsepower at 5,000 RPM. It's a 472 cubic inch Chrysler engine, 57-year model, blown and injected. Blown and injected. Now, explain that. It has fuel injection sitting on top of a 671 GMC blower which packs your air and your fuel into the engine under approximately 20 pounds per square inch of pressure in the cylinder. Well, something just occurred to me. How many gallons of fuel would you burn on a, on a quarter mile run? Approximately half a gallon to a quarter mile on gas. Now on alcohol or the other things you burn quite a bit more. The yeah, gas is not too much. Too, isn't it? Right. That's right. right here of course they're running strictly gas. Well now let's talk to Harrison Jacobs who uh, who won this uh, division and uh, Harrison I, I kind of like to know what it feels to go 100 and what was 162.45 miles an hour? Is that the best we've ever been here? No sir. Uh, about two months ago we turned 179 in it. In 841 which is the best it's ever turned. Yeah. But it wasn't on official strip or anything so they wouldn't give us a record on it. How long does it take you to slow this down? About a quarter of a mile with a chute. Yeah, you got that chute. You get any jolt or anything when that chute you, you get quite a bit. It's a ribbon chute cutting ribbons and you won't get the full pack of it. If you had a regular chute you just yank the whole car backwards. <laughs> right up on end, huh? 
Well, it's a beautiful car, and Ray, congratulations to you for being the owner, and Harrison, congratulations to you. And I know you fellows are very proud to take that record back to Memphis. Thank you, right, We sure are, and this makes our sixth win. I have participated in all nine nationals, and That's this good. is the sixth time that we have won in our particular class, Bill. And I believe we'd make it number seven next year. Huh? Well, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Now let's get back to the action on the track. You've just seen 162.45 uh, miles an hour, and I think we're going to have something even faster right here because these are the big double-A dragsters. Huh? The fastest dragster in competition, capable of a thousand horsepower. Tony Nancy in his Dodge powered dragster against Don Garland of Tampa, Florida. Also Dodge powered. This is Garland's on the inside, closest to the camera. The king of the fuelers, so called, but he's running in the gas competition only today. He was the runner up in the gas dragster last year. The countdown goes, and here goes Garland. Good start by both of them, but look at Garland move out. He's going to win it easily. He does, and he will go into the, into the finals now in this double-A dragster competition and try to win where he lost a year ago. You'll note the parachute coming out to slow these dragsters up. Uh, he's hitting about 175 miles an hour there, or 180 at the finish line. Here's a B dragster. Not quite as fast, but uh, still plenty powerful. Number 38 is Johnny Yacht of Marion, Indiana. Chevy-powered dragster. And uh, his competition will be number 503, close to the camera here, Ray Simpson of Grand Prairie, Texas. We've had entries from all over the United States coming here today. More than a thousand cars here in this competition. Here they go. Johnny Yount with a good start. And look at the Simpson move up. It's going to be a close one. And now Yount moves on in front. A closing spurt. And so John Yount will go to the finals in the B Dragster competition as we move toward the culmination of a week's racing here at Indianapolis, Indiana. Now the trophy run in the eight dragster. This is number 382, Harry Hobus of St. Louis, in a 63 Chevy powered dragster. And he'll be in against Dave Schaefer of Homestead Falls, Ohio, also in a Chevy powered dragster. Here they go. Look at him burn the rubber off those rear tires. Good start by Harry Hobus, but look at Schaefer move. Schaefer moving up even, and he takes him. Despite a good start by Hobus, Schaefer takes it, and that's the trophy run, the finals, in the eight dragster competition. The champion, Dave Schaefer of Homestead Falls, Ohio. That was 156.25 top speed, and the elapsed time, 9.48 seconds for Schaefer. Now a trophy run in the B dragster competition. You saw Johnny Yount a moment ago from Marion, Indiana, uh, win his semifinal. He's in there now against Albert Tram of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tram will be farthest from the camera here. 57 Chevy powered dragster, and here is Johnny Yount. Back now to see if he can win, and look at him jump. It's a good start, though, a good start, and it is Yount taking the lead. They move to the halfway mark, and it's very easy. And it's Yount just by half a car lane. So Johnny Yount has won the Beat Dragster Trophy in the elapsed time of 9.78, top speed 150.25 miles an hour. That's really moving, isn't it? In a quarter of a mile. These fellas have to be very careful when they come up to that start line because if they're just a fraction over before the start of the race, the red light will go on. Okay, here's the trophy race. And this is in the A altered class. Number 505 is Nolly Simpson of Chesapeake, Virginia. And he's in the 23 Ford T with a Chevy engine. The former national champion. And he's in against Charlie Smith, Oklahoma City. A red light is on. A red light is on in the far lane. And even though Nolly Simpson appears to win this one, he's going to be disqualified. And so Charlie Smith, here's the camera, will win the trophy in the A. Altered competition, a tough break for Simpson. And Smith wins it with an elapsed time of 10.11, 140 miles an hour. Now we have another trophy run coming up, this one in the B. Altered class. Paul Harding back in his car number 548. That's the 27 Ford T with a 58 Chevy engine in it. Looks like a little truck, doesn't it? And Dick Stocksdale of Baltimore. In number 375, 
is in against him. So this is the trophy run, the final. Here they go. And Horning takes the lead. And Stocksdale is in trouble. The car is off the track in front of us, and it's going to move onto the inside. And Horning is going to win this one easily. And uh, it looks like something locked up on Stocksdale's car. And Horning takes it with an elapsed time of 10.92 or 128.57 for his top speed. Dick Stocksdale getting out. Uh, they're running over with a couple of extinguishers and the crash wagon will go over. And there, we can see there's oil dripping out from underneath the pan, so it looks very much like Stocksdale blew an engine right at the start. These engines are subjected to tremendous pressure. So Hornick is the winner. Now here's the big one, Elza Poppin. Driven by Ron Abbott of Albany, New York, in against Don Garlicks. Closest to the camera. This is the double-A dragster competition, the finals, the trophy run, and the world's fastest dragsters are right here, getting ready to go. Look at them go. Burning off their rubber in Garlicks. Makes a slight lead. Boy, they're just wheel to wheel. Look at them come down here. Very close at the finish line, and it is lane one. Closest to the camera, Don Garlicks, the winner in a very close final race with Ron Abbott. It is 8.72 elapsed time, the speed, top speed, 174.08 miles per hour when they hit the finish line. We'll be back to talk with Don Garlitz in just a moment. Now Newport Menthol Cigarettes shows you how an expert looks at your favorite sport. Well, here's a happy guy right now, Don Garlitz, who has just won the Class AA Dragster competition. And, uh, gee, it must give you a thrill to win this thing uh, with gas in that tank. It certainly does. <laughs> it means we run fuel most all the rest of the time. Actually, this is kind of a new car for you, isn't it, Don? Uh, right. It's brand new for this meet. Just built it. How fast did you go in it on that final run? I final, didn't get final figures there. Final run was 174 miles an hour with an 8.73 elapsed time. Oh, that's tremendous. Well, actually, you've earned the title of the king of the dragsters. Uh, you actually started back, what, 10 years ago before anybody even heard of it? Well, maybe Mickey Thompson. Well, they were running on the coast when we started racing. Florida and California were the first. I think California was a little ahead of Florida, but in 1950, we were holding drag races. It's an intriguing thing. I can understand why guys go around a track, but I, I've often wondered how you could spend all that time and all that money to go for 8.73 seconds. That's the thing. It's the challenge of that. They, see, in the beginning, they were running in 15, 16 seconds, and uh, the experts all put limitations of, you know, ridiculous times, 12, 13 seconds, and then everybody just went to beat that, and finally they got them down into the sevens in places. Well, I'll tell you this, as far as sports are concerned, this is uh, absolutely the most expensive in terms of dollars per second in all of sport. Right. <laughs> Let's take a look at the interior of this. Uh, I think it's kind of uh, an unusual car in that uh, You've got uh, things in there that we don't normally see in a, in a right. let's say, in an automobile. It's built entirely for acceleration going in a straight line. There's absolutely nothing on this car that's not vital to the operation of it. No, PD, no Mickey not Mickey even Mickey one Mickey. washer is on this car just because we think it, it looks good. Yeah. This, I see, is the uh, parachute. The parachute. Right. This is the brake. This little thing, the aiming device or steering wheel or handle grip, what you want to call it, steers it, and the kill switch for the magneto and the clutch and the throttle pedal, and that's about it. I don't imagine it's too comfortable in there, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> well, congratulations to you, Don Garlitz. I know it's been a big victory for you in 63. Hope you repeat in 64. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, that's uh, just about the story here from the Indianapolis Raceway Park and the Drag Racing Championships of 1963. Before leaving, we'd like to thank Ed Eaton, the director of the races, also Ben Cossert, who was the publicity director, and uh, Monk Reynolds, who helped with our spotting. Next week, ABC's Wide World of Sports will be in Rockford, Illinois, for the National Karting Championships. Competition will be contested in both light and heavy classes in these unique vehicles, which attains speeds of 65 miles an hour over Rockford's half-mile asphalt course, and it's complete with left and right-hand turns. From the speed of karting, you'll move to the grace of synchronized swimming at the National AAU Synchronized Swimming Championships for Women in Silver Spring, Maryland. Talented young women perform the music before ABC's underwater and overhead cameras in this beautiful and graceful event. Wide World of Sports is Rune Arledge. Irish football produced by William Seaman. Drag racing coverage produced by Chuck Howard. Directed by Andy Sedera. And now this is Bill Fleming along with Jim McKay and Michael O'Hare inviting you to join us again next week.
This program was originated on videotape. On Sunday afternoons, it's exciting American Football League play on ABC television, leading to the league championship and all-star games. And don't forget, on Friday nights, it's the fight of the week over most of these ABC stations. to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, the human drama of athletic competition. This has been ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company, makers of the all-new and streamlined slim adjustable razor that adjusts to your skin and beard and those super blue blades for all but unbelievable shaving comfort. By United Delco. For the fresh new starting power of Delco batteries and car care you can count on, look for the United Delco service sign and simply say Delco. And by the Foundation for Commercial Banks, representing the full service bank where you have your checking account. A sports program's production, this has been an ABC Television Network sports presentation.